Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look at chi-squared which is a statistical test. So first of all we want to know why we would use chi-squared. So we use statistics because it's very hard for us um, as humans to decide if something is due to chance um, or if there's a pattern for it, so if there's a reason for it. It's very hard for us to look at numbers and make that decision. So we use statistics as a way for us to make that decision about whether or not something is happening by chance or whether there's maybe a reason behind it and in our case because it's science if there's some sort of scientific reason behind the results that we see. So for example let's say we have a coin now a coin has got heads and tails so if we flip a coin and we get a head then we know that because there are two sides there's a 50 50 chance that we would get that head so we would expect in terms of probability that 50% of the time we get heads and 50% we get tails. If we flip the coin a second time and we got heads again, well, that's not 50-50. We've just got 100% heads and we would have expected to get 50%. So we can use something like a chi-squared statistical test to tell us if getting two heads out of two flips is likely or not likely. But doing it twice is not very helpful. And in fact, as that's a sample size of two. It's a very small sample, and that's not going to be enough for us to do a statistical test. We'd need to flip the coin a lot more times than twice. So if we flip it some more times, so we've got heads, heads, and then we've got heads, 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 and tails. So out of six flips, we've had five heads and one tail. So this is our ratio. Again, remember, we'd expect a 50-50 or a one-to-one -one ratio. So this does not match our 50-50 ratio. But again, does that mean there's something going on? Or is it still, you know, with only six flips of a coin, is it still actually quite likely that you could get five heads and one tail? Chi-squared could help us with that, although again, we'd probably need to do it more times. So we keep doing it. We get some heads and we get tails, it's now seven to three. But again, and this is what I was saying at the beginning, it's very hard for us to decide if seven to three, is that so different from our one to one ratio that we think there's maybe something wrong with the coin? Maybe it's weighted on the head side. Or is it just that when you flip a coin, you don't always get exactly 50-50? We could keep doing it. And in fact, we could keep flipping and the more times we flip our coin, so the more data we've got, the more sure we're going to be in our decision about whether or not um, there's something strange going on with our coin. So after all of these flips, we get a 32 to 24 head to tail ratio. So what we would do is we could put that into um, our chi-squared calculations and we could come up with a chi-squared value. And then we'd be able to use that chi-squared value to say whether we think that it's likely that we would get the 32-24 ratio by chance. So there's nothing interesting going on. Or do we think it's very unlikely we'd get this ratio by chance and therefore we think that there is something wrong or something unusual with the coin or the way we flip them. That's why we would use chi-squared. So the next question then is when can we use it? Because there are lots of different kinds of statistical tests and you have to use them in the right situation. Otherwise, they don't work properly. So chi-squared is used where we're going to compare... Sorry, let me just slow down a bit. We're going to compare an expected value to an observed value. So an example here, as you can see, I'm just drawing out a Punnett square. So we know from our work on genetics that if we have something like, for example, here, we've got um, looking at eye colour. If we have two parents who are both heterozygous for eye colour, then we can use the Punnett square to work out our probability that the offspring will have particular phenotype. So we would end up here with a three to one expected phenotype ratio. So we'd expect to see um, offspring, three of them having brown eyes for one of them having blue eyes. So 
chi-squared can be used in a situation like this where you have some kind of um, expected ratio and then you look at the observed ratio so we expect a three to one ratio but when we actually do the, the in this case it would be the breeding experiment and we look at the offspring phenotypes that we've got and we might see that we haven't got exactly a three to one ratio so in this case we see that we've got 26 to 14 ratio, which you can simplify to 13 to 7. So we're using our chi-squared to compare what we see, our observed ratio, with what we expect. And chi-squared is going to tell you if this is significantly different from this, and therefore in this case we'd have to look at our, um, the genetics and what's going on and try and figure out why. So you can use sky squared in situations like this, and any time you've got frequencies or numbers or percentages of things in different categories. So here we've got blue and brown. There are two categories. So it might be that you are looking at, um, maybe with uh, ecology, you would use chi-squared if you're going to look at the percentage cover of a plant in two different habitats. So percentage cover is something that you compare. Maybe you've got a woodland habitat versus a grassland habitat. So they're two different categories comparing the percentage cover. You could use chi-squared. So anything where you've got percentages or numbers in different categories. When we're using statistics, we always come up with what we call a null hypothesis. So a null hypothesis is just saying that we think that nothing is going on. So the word we need to start thinking about is significant. So significant is what we use in statistics when we're saying that, OK, there might be a bit of a difference, but the, signif the difference is not significant. It's not important because you're never going to get things exactly in the right ratio, for example. It's unlikely. So, for example, if we think about our head flipping example, um, you would expect a one to one ratio. But we know that if you flip the coin 100 times, you probably won't have 50 50. Maybe you get um, you know, 52 and 48. There's a difference. But what we'd say is that we don't think that difference is significant. And the null hypothesis, which we call H naught, is the way of us saying that there is no significant difference between the observed and the expected values. Opposite to this then, our H1, which is our regular hypothesis, is saying that there is a significant difference. So the null hypothesis is this one here, H0, there is no significant difference. And this is important once we've done our calculation when we're writing our conclusion. OK, so we want to know what we do with the chi-squared value that we calculate. So let's take an example. So we do a calculation. I'm not going to go through how you do that calculation now, but you, you take your data, you take your values, um, you put it through some calculations and you get a, a chi-squared value, a statistical value. So in this case, we've done some uh, an experiment and we've got our chi-squared value of 4.13. Um, and in this situation, if we look at our example, of, it's the blue eyes versus brown eyes, we've got two categories, blue or brown. So once we've got our chi-squared value, we also need to look at something called the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus one. So in this case, we've got two categories. So the degrees of freedom is one. And this is just something you need to know so you can look up in the statistical table in the correct place. We don't need to understand what degrees of freedom means at the moment. You just have to know that it's the number of categories minus one. So once you've got those two things, our chi-squared value, and we know our degrees of freedom, we go to uh, our statistical tables, which are published and they're always the same, and we have to find our value. And what we're looking at is the value at the 95% confidence level. In biology, we always use this confidence level. We're saying we're 95% confident that, and then you might say there's no significant difference or there is a significant difference. 
because we know it's always possible that we're wrong. But in biology, 95% confident is the level that we're happy to work at. You can also talk about the significance level. It's the same thing. So a 95% confidence level is the same thing as a significance level of 0.05. It might be called a p-value of 0.05. So p meaning probability. It might be called a probability, and in that case it might be a probability of 5%. Or it could be a probability level of 0.05. These are all ways of saying the same thing. And the important thing is the number that you use, because you need to look this number up in the table. So I'll show you how we do that now. So in the table, first of all, it will show you the degrees of freedom along the side. So we know that it's one, so we're going to be looking in this row here. And then you have the significance level. So in biology, we always go for 0 0.05. So we're going to be looking here. So we're going to be finding the number that intersects these two points. So in this table here, this is our chi-squared value, the critical value, sorry. So we calculated a chi-squared of 4.13 from our data. The critical value for chi-squared at uh, one degree of freedom for our confidence level is 3.84. So we now use that information to make a conclusion about our data. So how do we do that? Well, there are several things that we need to include. We need to say what our chi-squared value is, so what have we calculated? We need to say whether that value that we've calculated is bigger or smaller than the critical value that we've just looked up in our table. We also need to say what probability level we're looking at, and that's always going to be 0 0.05. So this number is going to change depending on our calculations. This could be bigger or smaller, depending on the chi-square value we got. But this is always a probability level of 0 0.05. We then have to decide if we're going to accept or reject the null hypothesis. And from that, we would say, is there a significant difference or not between our observed and expected results? So let's run through an example. Let's say we do our calculation and we get a chi-squared value of 1.88. When we look at our table, we see, as I showed you in the last slide, that the critical value is 3.84. So we can say that our chi-squared value of 1.88 is smaller than the critical value at a probability level of 0 0.05. If chi-squared is smaller than the critical value, we accept the null hypothesis. Remember, that means the null hypothesis means there's no significant difference. So we say we accept the null hypothesis, which means there is no significant difference between, and then you have to say what it is. So it depends what your experiment is. So maybe you would say uh, we accept the null hypothesis, so there is no significant difference between the percentage of cover for plants in the field in the open and the percentage cover of plants in the field with trees. Or you could say there's no significant difference uh, between our observed results and a three to one ratio. What's the other possibility? Well, oh sorry, if you say this, so if there's no significant difference, you also then say that any difference is due to chance. Because as I said before, there will be some difference in the values. They won't be exactly the same because biology, nature doesn't work like that. So if there is any difference, it's not significant. It's just because of chance. So this is a phrase that you add on if there's no significant difference. OK, let's have one more example. So again, run through that. This is the, the layout that we always have. So this time we'll say that our chi-squared value, so we've got a different experiment and we do our calculation and we get a chi-squared of 3.99. The critical value again was 3.84 when we looked in our table. So we know that a chi-squared value of 
is bigger than the critical value at a probability level of 0 0.05. Because it's bigger, we reject the null hypothesis, which means that there is a significant difference between our observed and expected results. So you might say there is a significant difference between our results and a 3 to 1 ratio. There is a significant difference between the percentage cover of plants in the field in the open and in the field with trees. That is how you work through chi-squared and how you make a conclusion. Now all of that is laid out on the worksheet so you can see this written down um, in sentences as well. So have a look at that and it should help you. Okay, thank you very much.